David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. A few weeks ago, I shared with you a very affordable pen from the Chinese brand Asfine that I was very much impressed with, and today I have another one for you. Uh, this one is called the P80. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this intriguing pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Asfine for providing this budget pen for review. Um, I believe the correct pronunciation of the company is Asfine, uh, as one of the original logos for the brand had an actual vine incorporated in it. Uh, for years, when it came to starter fountain pens, uh, it was typically the same bunch. You know, the Pilot Metro, the Lamy Safari, the Quebeco Sport, a couple of Twisby options. But recently, the lesser expensive Chinese brands like Asvine have really stepped up their game and are making a very competitive and quality product in that lower end price range. Uh, it's nice to see the competition. And it's nice to see brands like Asvine producing a product which can't be easily dismissed as junk, which was not always the case. The P80 arrives in this standard Asvine box. Um, it is available in five different varieties. There is the blue, the gray blue, the red, the transparent clear, and the transparent gray. Um, inside the box, we have a couple of things. There is a use and care guide. And then there is something else uh, included that I really appreciate. It is this little utility tool. Um, you use it to disassemble the piston mechanism on this pen. But what's really cool about this is that the different cutouts here are varying sizes, which can be used on different manufacturers' pens. I like that they provided you with a tool that can be used for more than just the pen you purchased. And the pen I have here is the gray blue. This is the Asvine P80. It has a brass overlay with a chrome finish over a transparent acrylic. As the gray blue name would imply, the acrylic for this model is indeed gray blue. I felt this made for a more subtle contrast as opposed to some of the other combinations which were a bit bolder. Uh, the distinguishing feature of this pen is that overlay. As I mentioned, it's a chrome-plated brass. There's a couple of things I like about it. One is that the edges of the uh, cutouts on this metal are not sharp, which is a good thing. I've tested some overlay pens where the metal edges can be a bit rough. I like that on this pen that they're not. The other thing I liked was that uh, I couldn't see a discernible repeating pattern. Sometimes overlays on overlays like this, you can see where the pattern repeats or it's the same pattern on both the cap and the barrel. And I don't see that here. Everything is unique, um, except for the spiders. Now, spider themes aren't really my thing. Nothing against spiders, but in regard to this imagery, I'm a bit indifferent. Um, I felt it would have looked just fine if the random shapes found elsewhere on the pen were just covering the space of the spiders. Um, I do like that the motif is rather subtle. I wouldn't look at this and feel like it was a spider-themed pen, more that it is a pen with a pattern overlay which happens to have a couple of spiders on it. Uh, they don't really pop off this pen, so they like that they are essentially hidden in plain sight. Uh, the gray-blue resin is translucent enough to give you a decent look at what's going on inside your pen. Uh, one of my pet peeves are pens with translucent or transparent caps where the nib doesn't uh, orient either straight up, aligning with the clip, or straight down. Now, there are multiple uh, threads on this cap, so you could have a couple of different orientations, but neither of them results in my desired orientation. Now, the last time I mentioned this about an Asvine pen, some viewers left comments that you could adjust the clip to the desired orientation, which is true, which sounds good in practice as well. But if you did that, then the clip wouldn't, would be out of alignment with the company name on the barrel. So in my mind, that's not really a viable solution. Okay, let's take a look at the parts and features of this pen. The top of the cap is rounded. Uh, this transitions into the clip. The clip is a bit wide at the top and gently tapers down a bit. I find it to be functional and accommodating of materials of varying thicknesses. 
A subtle design element that I appreciated is the overlay near the end of the clip. Uh, the area directly below the clip is devoid of a cutout. Uh, if there was a cutout in that location, your pocket or pouch could potentially get caught up in that rather than sliding under the clip. Uh, at the end of the clip, the company name is stamped. And on the other side, it has the name of this pen, P80. While Asvine pens don't have the most exciting names, uh, they are utilitarian. Uh, they either begin with the letter P or V, which indicates the filling system for the pen. The P is for piston and the V is for vacuum. Uh, the very end of the cap has a tapered step down, which results in a minimal step down from the cap to the barrel. The barrel then tapers down until you get to the very end, which has an extended metal piston knob and it comes to a rounded point. Um, as I've mentioned a few times, this is a piston filler. The piston mechanism is smooth and operates well. Um, I like uh, how between the overlay and the translucent resin, you'll be able to get a good look at your ink situation. I will say, however, that while I, I like the looks of this tapered slick metal piston knob, it's not one of my favorite practical designs. Sometimes, especially if your hands are wet, uh, you could find it a bit slick and you have to really squeeze and turn it with a bit of intention to uh, make it operate. A design element near the bottom of the knob would have maybe have helped provide some additional grip. That would have been nice. The cap twists off with one and a quarter rotations and underneath we have a number six stainless steel nib. As you can see here, this is a medium. That nib size is rather prominent. I personally prefer when the company name or a graphic or logo is more prominent. Uh, having the nib size on the nib is of course important, but I don't need it that large. Uh, Schmidt does that as well, I believe. It does make it easier to identify though. These nibs are available in extra fine, fine, as well as medium. Uh, it is also available with either a fine or broad Bach nib, uh, but that will come at an additional expense of $10, I believe. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is metal and rather slick. It begins with a slight flare and tapers up before transitioning into the metal threads, which I don't find to be sharp or uncomfortable, and a rounded step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, I mentioned the section was a bit slick. While the ridge helps prevent my grip from slipping off the end, I do find that if I'm gripping the section a bit further back, it'll have a tendency to want to uh, travel forward. I can appreciate how aesthetically the session looks nice matching the rest of the chrome exterior, but if slick metal sections were eventually banned by the International Pen Consortium, uh, it would not hurt my feelings. Uh, this cap doesn't post, which is fine. Uh, I wouldn't be a fan of posting metal on metal anyways. Um, I do find the pen long enough to use comfortably unposted. And as I mentioned earlier, the edges of the overlay are smooth enough that they really don't feel uncomfortable or gouge into your hand. The Asvine P80 can be found on sale on Amazon. I will put a link to where you can find it in the notes below, and the price of the pen is $35. $34.99 to be precise. And for what you receive with this pen, I find that to be a very reasonable price. Uh, it's a pen with some personality and some sharp looks. Uh, it looks more expensive than it costs, which is nice. It does have some style to it. And as you will see in the writing sample, it also performs nicely as well. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and the aforementioned writing sample. Before we get started, I just wanted to show you that tool again. Uh, I just think it's really cool that they give you something that can be used for multiple pens. Uh, these will fit in different piston knobs and there's some that actually have to clip in to rotate around. Uh, and so uh, I was appreciative of that. It's a nice tool. And here is the Asvine P80. Wanted to give you another look at that overlay. There's the spider there on the cap. And then there's another one here on the barrel facing the other way. I kind of like that they're facing opposite directions, uh, just so it's not too matchy-matchy, but I think it looks nice. And like I said, I think it's a, a subtle theme. They don't necessarily pop out too much. 
But in regard to some size comparisons, uh, here was another pen from Aspine, which was, had an overlay, which is the V169. You can see this one has a bit of uh, a, a darker blue on the, uh, on the resin. Uh, and then we had the one that I just recently reviewed, which was the P36. Then right here we have the P50. I thought that this had a nice kind of crushed ice looking pink and white and light blue theme. Again, that's the P50. And then finally we have the V126, which is uh, another piston filler, or sorry, a, a vacuum filler. So I do have a couple of more here that um, I, I might be reviewing in the near future. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to learn more about those pens as well. And then in regard to some non-Asvine pens, uh, we have an Opus 88. Uh, and then here is a Twisby Diamond 580 Iris. And here is a Lamy All-Star. So here we go with the writing sample for the Asvine. And this is the P80. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink that I chose to go with this was Monteverde. And this is DC Super Show Blue. This is what the ink looks like. You can see it's a nice, vibrant, saturated blue. Uh, this is what it looks like with Farney's American Blue, uh, as well as Private Reserve's American Blue. Oh, I hate when the swatches do that and smudge everything. I need to wait for the longer for that to dry. Uh, this is what the bottle looks like. Uh, you can see this was a 2018 special edition. Uh, Monteverde historically has given away a uh, limited edition ink at the DC show uh, each year. And this one was from 2018 and uh, one of my favorite that they've given away. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I do find this stainless steel nib to be pleasant. You can't get a little bit of line variation out of here from nothing to pushing a little bit more. So it uh, has a little bit more flexibility than I would have expected. Uh, but I would by no means call this a flex pen at all. I'd say for a medium nib, the ink flow here is substantial. In regard to reverse writing... Uh, it's not too scratchy. It does lay down an extra, extra fine line. And then in regard to some fast writing. The feed has no issue in keeping up. So there we have the Asvine P80. Um, I think, uh, like I mentioned before, that it's nice to see some of these uh, lesser expensive Chinese, brand, Chinese brands uh, step up to the plate and kind of produce something that is a little bit more quality and something that can be mentioned as far as some of the better entry-level pens out on the market. It's nice to see. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.